John White, self-emancipated from enslavement in Boone County around 1844, leaving behind a wife, Jane Stevens, also called Jenny, and their five children. John settled in Michigan, but wanted them free. He had escaped from George Washington Brasher, who traded and hunted the enslaved. Brasher was infuriated by John's escape and was determined to recapture what he considered his property. He and other slave hunters even traveled all the way to Michigan hunting John. Because it was too dangerous for John to return for his family around 1848, he enlisted the help of Laura Smith Haviland, an abolitionist and Underground Railroad conductor. Haviland agreed to meet with Jenny on the farm of her slaveholder, Benjamin Stevens. This meeting was arranged by free African Americans Samuel Barkshire and Joseph and Mary Eddington, who lived in Rising Sun, Indiana. All were involved in Underground Railroad activity in the area. Rising Sun was directly across the river from the Stevens farm. Haviland and Mary Eddington visited Jenny, offering to help her escape. Though Jenny was thrilled to hear that her husband was safe, she refused to leave, explaining that several of her children were working on the property of another Stevens family member, and she wouldn't leave them behind. Haviland left, but would try again once the children returned. Haviland was in contact with an enslaved man named William Allen, a friend of John's in Boone County. Trusted by his slaveholder and having enough freedom of movement to observe what was going on in the area, Allen was a valuable source of information for Haviland. She returned for a second attempt, but Allen cautioned it was not safe due to an increase in patrollers in the area. Haviland returned to Michigan, delivering the bad news to John. Growing increasingly frustrated, he ignored certain danger and returned for his family. Sadly, the reunion was short-lived. With Allen's help, he was able to get his family into a boat and begin the crossing to Indiana. The river was too high, washing them ashore. Jenny and the children were immediately captured. John was caught a few days later, but managed to regain his freedom with help from Cincinnati anti-slavery connections. The escape attempt led Stevens to bring Jenny and the children to the slave market, selling them together to a man who separated them. Jenny, who fought so hard to keep her family intact, was forced to suffer 15 years without her children. She was determined to one day gather her scattered family. A few years after she was sold, Jenny was taken from Georgetown, Kentucky to Missouri, where she likely met her second husband, Dudley Carter. Her first husband, John, had made his way to Ontario, Canada and remarried, neither knowing the fate of the other. When a, a slave escaped, family members who were left behind or friends never knew if they made it. In 1865, Jenny and Dudley settled in Emporia, Kansas. Carter was a minister with the AME Church, and the couple traveled for his work, allowing her to broaden her search. Like many families separated by slavery, Jenny began to place information wanted ads in newspapers widely distributed in African American churches. She still remembered the details of her children's whereabouts and to whom they were sold. Her efforts paid off. She found three of her children, Oscar, Emily, and George. Sadly, Jenny was not reunited with her two daughters, Lucy Ann, who had reportedly been living in Louisville, Kentucky, but had not been located, and Cicely, who had been sold to a Kentucky-born slaveholder living in the Deep South. He did business in New Orleans and also owned several large cotton plantations in Mississippi. Her fate remains unknown. Jenny was no longer a childless mother. Her resolve not only brought her children to her, it brought them to each other. 
the three remained close with their stepfather and each other throughout their lives. Jenny died in 1896 in Kansas. Her legacy was one of determination and the strength of family.